Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Cary Grant, Claude Rains, Evelyn Keyes, and James Gleason in Here Comes Mr. Jordan. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. One evening after dinner, the family and I settled down in our most comfortable chairs to see a motion picture at home. None of us stayed settled long. The picture was Columbia's Here Comes Mr. Jordan. And from myself down to the youngest grandchild, it kept us all on the edge of our chairs. Following the peculiar career of a prizefighter named Joe Pendleton, who was killed in the first scene... He had lived to get the girl at the end, the neatest trick of the year. A slight error of destiny takes the hero through adventures that make Christopher Columbus, Marco Polo, and Magellan look like stay-at-homes. You see, Joe gets killed, but he is, is not dead, and thereby hangs one of the most curious picture stories of the year. So here comes Mr. Jordan, and here comes Cary Grant. And from the original screencast, Claude Rains, Evelyn Keyes, and James Gleason. Whenever a producer announces a new picture, he's immediately deluged with applications from hundreds of ambitious young ladies, some of them with real talent, who want to become motion picture stars. It took me weeks to examine all the applications that came in when I announced Reap the Wild Wind. But it was very gratifying to learn how many of these girls were boosters for Lux Toilet Soap. One of tonight's stars, a Lux girl herself, Evelyn Keyes, made her screen debut several years ago in one of my pictures. Perhaps you'd like to hear what it was in her screen test that caught my attention. It was her completely natural beauty. She was talented, of course, and her voice was very good. But more than anything else, that fragile blonde beauty and the lovely complexion that goes with it dominated the screen. So my advice to the would-be stars of tomorrow is this. Keep your beauty natural. And naturally, Lux Toilet Soap can give you a lot of help there. Now the rising curtain brings Here Comes Mr. Jordan, starring Cary Grant as Joe, Claude Rains as Mr. Jordan, Evelyn Keyes as Betty, and James Gleason as Max. Here are the Adirondack Mountains. Here are the murmuring pines, the leafy glades, here are the cool, bubbling streams. And here in this mountain paradise are two prize fighters trying to knock each other's brains out. They're sparring away in the training ring. The one in the blue trunks is Joe Pendleton, contender for the championship of the world. And that man at the ringside in the battered derby is his trainer, Max Corkle. Okay, Joe, that's enough. Cut it up. Inside for a rough down. Oh, come on, Max. They only had five rounds. Can't I have a couple more? You heard me. I said that's enough. Now, I'll save some of that for my dog. Hey, how'd that look, Maxie? Just fair. Not enough speed. Go on. I'm in the pink. Break down, Maxie. Who's your favorite fighter? Stop your clowning. Look, Joe, I decided to finish training in New York, so we'll break camp right after lunch. Yeah? Oh, that's great. I can fly myself down this afternoon, huh? Oh, listen, Joe. Do me a favor, will you? Leave that plane of yours up here and take the train down. Will you do that? Oh, what can happen to me when I got the lucky saxophone along? Hey, where is it? Where's my sax? Oh, here it is, Joe. Oh, thanks, pal. Joe, I don't like this flying business. The way we're sitting out within two weeks in the greatest fight of your life and on the way to the championship, why take chances? Oh, yeah? Fine thing. Me known as the flying pug, the papers will all say flying pug takes train. Fine thing. Ah, oh, Joe. I'll meet you in New York at the gym tomorrow. <laughs> hey, Maxie, how about a little of your favorite tune, huh? No, not now, Joe. I, yep, uh... Oh, Joe, cut out, will you? This is serious. Joe. That's awful. Will you please lay off? Will you lay off? Hey, what goes on? What's the matter with this? Hey, what the... What? Hey, come on, baby. Straighten out. Don't give me that stuff. Hey, hey, come on. Come on, man. Listen, what 
Who goes on? Where am I? That's all I want to know. Where am I? Now, I've explained all that. Oh, you explained nothing. What am I doing here? A couple of missed cars flying over New Jersey. But you aren't in New Jersey now, Mr. Pendleton. Your plane crashed. Now, listen. If I ain't in New Jersey, where am I? And who are you? I am messenger number 7013. My mission is to take care of all dead persons in my territory. Huh? Dead? Who's dead? You are, Mr. Pendleton. Oh, you're screwy. I never felt better in my life. I'm in a pink. How can I be dead? Mr. Pendleton, look around you. Does this look like the earth? Well, all I can see is a lot of clouds. Have you ever walked on clouds before? No, and furthermore, I don't like it, so get me out of here. Oh, no. Oh, no. We can't leave just yet, Mr. Pendleton. You see, this is the halfway point, the stopover for new arrivals from the world. Oh, listen, you don't make any sense at all. You must be a little cracked. I'm doing New York. I've got to get there. Where can I find a taxi? There are no taxis here, as you can see, sir. Hey, hey. Who are all those people over there? Oh, uh, the new arrivals, sir. They're waiting to be checked off the list. Oh, yeah? Well, I hope they ain't all as screwy as you. I'll find out about this thing. Oh, Mr. Pendleton, come back. Any more arrivals? Yes, sir. Messenger 424 reporting, sir. Nine passengers. We'll check their names against this list and then proceed. Yes, sir. Hey, who's in charge around here? Where's the boss? Oh, Mr. Pendleton, will you stop this commotion? What's the trouble? Oh, oh, uh, messenger 7013 reporting, sir. No trouble at all. No, there's no trouble yet, but there's going to be. Are you the boss here? Oh, Mr. Pendleton, a little more respect. This is Mr. Jordan. Oh, Mr. Jordan, eh? Well, look, Mr. Jordan, I want to get a taxi to New York and quick. What is the meaning of this? Oh, it's a very difficult case, sir. Fought me tooth and nail all the way up here. Uh, fought him. Huh. How do you like that? Listen, Mr. Jordan, don't waste your time listening to this comic. Do you know what he keeps telling me? He keeps telling me I'm dead. I'm afraid you are. Oh, what? Dead. Oh, you too, eh? You're just as crazy as he oh, is. Oh, well, Mr. Pendleton, now, please. What is his name? A Pendleton. Joseph. No, no, you even got that board up. I'm Joe... Not Joe Pendleton. Not Pendleton, Joseph. It's oh, Joe Pendleton. Pendleton. I'm Pendleton. 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 I don't see his name on my list. Well, I can't be on any list. What's your occupation? Musician? Musician? I never gave you the idea I'm a musician. Well, that uh, instrument you're carrying? Oh, that? Oh, that's my sax. That's just a hobby, like flying. Look, I'm Joe Pendleton, the flying pug, they call me. I'm a prize fighter. You were a prize fighter. There's no Pendleton Joseph listed. There, you see, what did I tell you? Mr. Sloan, contact the registrar's office, will you? Ask them for everything they have on Pendleton Joseph. Yes, sir. No, I'm trying to tell you, fellas, I'm not ready for this place yet. I never felt better in my life. I'm in the pink. It's strange he isn't on the list. Oh, now, really, sir, it isn't possible that he could have survived. Why, he was hurtling to earth with the speed of a meteor. Yes, but I wouldn't have crashed. I'd have pulled the ship out somehow if you left me alone. Oh, quiet. Messenger. Uh, yes, Mr. Jordan. Am I to understand that you took this man out of that plane before it crashed? Yeah, that's what he did. Uh, yes, sir. I, um... Unpardonably presumptuous. Yes, sir. Oh, but there he was, sir. Just plummeting earthward. I wanted to spare him the agony of crashing. That's enough, so... please. You're new, aren't you? I am, yes, sir. I was put on only this morning. I thought so. Overzealousness. Out for record collection. Mr. Jordan. <laughs> yes? On Pendleton Joseph, the official record says both his parents are happily withdrawn and awaiting his arrival. Joseph is scheduled to join them the morning of May 11th, 1992. 1992? 1022? Well, that's 50 years from now. What did I tell you? It seems you were a little premature. Hmm. 50 years to go yet. You fellas certainly pulled a boner this time. Oh, uh, Mr. Pendleton, I feel I owe you an apology. I'll tell the world you do. Oh, well. Never mind. We all make mistakes. There's no harm done. Just forget about it and take me back. Uh, take you back? Naturally. Take him back. Return him to the body out of which you so indiscreetly snatched him. Yeah, make it snappy. Well, I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Jordan, and thanks for straightening everything out for me. Not at all. <laughs> I'll be seeing you 50 years from now, if you're still on the job. I will be. Well, come on, let's go. And Mr. Pendleton, if you don't mind, I'm the one who says let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Strolling around on the clouds. Is there anything wrong? Oh, oh, uh, Mr. Jordan. Oh, hello, Mr. Jordan. I didn't expect to see you for 50 years, Mr. Pendleton. Oh, Mr. Jordan, something terrible has happened. Uh, shut up, I'll tell him. You keep quiet. Now, look, Mr. Jordan, we go down there to New Jersey. Well, my body ain't in the plane. Now, then we go to Corker's place. My body ain't there either. Finally, I find out what's happened. Why well, you guys kept me up here gabbing, that Corker gets my body out of the plane and has me cremated. <laughs> cremated? Yeah. 
Oh, that's bad. Oh, it's deplorable, Mr. Jordan. I feel just ghastly. Well, how do you think I feel? <laughs> Wait till I see that cork go. He can't go around burning me up and get away with it. This is very bad. This complicates everything. Oh, I have an idea, Mr. Jordan. Couldn't we have him reborn? Nothing doing. I'm not going to go through that again. <laughs> Well, I see I'll have to take personal charge of this. Come along, Joseph. Uh, well, wait a minute. Where to? Well, I'm taking you back to Earth. <laughs> yeah, but you can't. Didn't I just tell you? I haven't got a body anymore. What of it? I'll get you another body. Huh? You'll do what? Um, another body? That's what I said. Come along, Joseph. Ah, uh, now, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What kind of a deal is this? You can't go shoving just anybody's body off on me. Not on your life. I put in ten years getting that body in the pink. But, Joseph, it's gone. Your body doesn't exist any longer. Now, Mr. Jordan. Now, Joe, you shall have your choice of a thousand bodies, all excellent specimens. I promise you, we'll keep looking until we find a body you like. Now, that's fair enough, isn't it? Mm. Well, I don't want any more of what's coming to me. I just want what it was and what it was going to be. No more, no less. So I expect you to make good, Mr. Jordan. I'll do my best. Come along. Goodbye, Mr. Pendleton. Good luck. Oh, that sounds mighty weird coming from you. <laughs> you know, I thought that messenger fellow was good at getting around, but you're terrific, Mr. Jordan. Russia, Australia, South Africa, and now New York. How do you do it? Well, that's a trade secret, Joe. Yeah? Joe... We've made 130 stops. I've offered you the cream of last week's crop, and you've turned up your nose at the lot. Yeah, but there wasn't a decent physique in the whole bunch, Mr. Jordan. You can't slip me a second raider. You've got to remember I was in the pink. That is becoming a most obnoxious color, Joe. <laughs> now, don't mention it again, please. Oh, okay, I won't. Well, where's the next stop? The next stop is that house across the street. Oh, yeah? Hey, it's a pretty snazzy place, isn't it? Who did we size up in there? The owner, Bruce Farnsworth. Well, look, uh, I can't go into a place like that. I, I mean, well, you've got to dress up a little, you know. Joe, I've explained it 20 times. No one can see us, and no one can hear us. Oh. We are invisible, Joe. Yeah, that's right. I keep forgetting. Well, let's take a look at this bird. Gee. You know, Mr. Jordan, I'll never get used to this. To what, Joe? Walking through walls. It ain't natural. Hey, uh, what's the dope on this Farnsworth guy? Well, he's about your age and uh, fairly husky. Well, about my age and he's got a joint like this, he must be rolling in dough. He inherited it, Joe. Mm-hmm. Uh, well set up? Oh, quite. Uh, played polo a while back. Oh, that sounds good. Is he dead? No. Mm. Going to die, though, huh? Mm-hmm. Sick, huh? No, not uh, really. He uh, has a slightly run-down condition. Oh, just slightly run-down. <laughs> he's going to die, that's all. He's being murdered, Joe. What? Murdered? You mean... Well, is it going on right now? Mm-hmm. But right here in this house? That's right. Well, who's doing it? His wife. <laughs> and the man she's in love with, Farnsworth's confidential secretary. Whew. Nice people you want me to meet. How are they killing him? They're drowning him in the bathtub. <laughs> Holy cow! Well, come on, let's scram out of here. I'm going to keep my nose clean. Now, wait, Joe. Oh, now, look, Mr. Jordan. You don't think I'm crazy enough to change places with a guy who's got a wife like that hanging around? I ain't punch drunk yet. We'll have to wait here until I collect him. It's my job. Well, how can you sit there when there's a guy being killed? Why don't we call the cops? I'm afraid they wouldn't pay any attention to us, Joe. Even the New York's finest can't see or hear us. Oh, yeah, that's right. Wait. It's all over. What? You mean he's dead? Hmm? He's dead. <laughs> Hurry, Tony. It's all right, Julia. Now keep calm. Hey, are those the two that did it? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. That's uh, Mrs. Farnsworth and the secretary, Tony Abbott. Gee... Look at her, you wouldn't see. Well, she don't look like a murderer, Mr. Jordan. Just you listen, Joe. Tony, I'm frightened. Get hold of yourself, Julia. Tony, I don't know what's come over me. I have a feeling I can't shake off. That there's something weird, something hanging over us, watching us. Mm, you said it, sister. Come now, stop it, Julia. Now, what could be more natural? A glass of warm milk, a sleeping tablet or two, and a very tired, dissipated young man unfortunately drowses off in his bath. I beg your pardon, <gasps> Mrs. Farnsworth. Yes, what is it? Uh, Miss Betty Logan is here. She wants to see Mr. Farnsworth. Send her away. Don't be silly, Julia. Ask Miss Logan to come in, Sisk. Very good, sir. I can't talk to her now, Tony. Of course you can. Just be sympathetic. 
I'll be in the study. If she becomes difficult, bring her in to me. Hey, who's this Logan? Somebody else mixed up in the murder? You judge for yourself, Joe. Miss Logan. How do you do, Miss Logan? I'm Mrs. Farnsworth. May I see Mr. Farnsworth, please? I've got to see him. Why, yes, he'll be right down. Oh, be right down. She knows he's dead. Mrs. Farnsworth, my father's been arrested. Yes, I know. I'm sorry. He's sick, Mrs. Farnsworth. This will kill him. And he's not guilty of anything. It was about some worthless securities he sold, wasn't it? That Mr. Farnsworth sold under my father's name. Really? And what do you expect Mr. Farnsworth to do? I... I don't know. But he can't send an innocent man to jail. Well, I don't know about these things. Mr. Abbott has all the facts in the case, and he's in the study. Would you care to see him? Yes, if I could, please. Just come right in. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Jordan. That Logan girl. Oh, boy, I've never seen anything as beautiful as that. Not even in heaven. She is pretty, isn't she? Yeah. She's in a tough spot. She's got a lot of courage to come here alone to fight for her father. She worships him. Yeah. Well, she's no match for those buzzards. She needs help. You'd better go to work. Farnsworth is the only one who can help her, Joe. Well, he's dead. Yes, but you can be Farnsworth. Huh? Well, what do you mean? I don't get it. It's quite simple. Well, you mean you want me to be Farnsworth and have a swell girl like that hate me? But you'll make a very different Farnsworth, Joe. Spiritually, there'll be no change in you. Uh, yeah, but I wouldn't be myself. A guy's no good if he isn't himself. Joe, you'll always be yourself. You'd merely be using Farnsworth's physical covering, like uh, putting on a new overcoat. Yeah, uh? Well, it better be a pretty good overcoat. It's got to last me 50 years. <laughs> but inside that coat, you'd still be Joe Pendleton, thinking, acting, and feeling. Yeah, yeah. But that run-down overcoat, that playboy Farnsworth, I'd have to give up everything, a crack at the title, and... Uh... No, no, I couldn't do it, Mr. Jordan. I'd like to help you, but not that way. Oh, sis? Yes, Mr. Abbott? Did you tell Mr. Farnsworth that Miss Logan is here to see him? Yes, sir. Now, what's the idea? That, 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 that guy Abbott knows Farnsworth is dead. Oh, very convenient, the butler discovering the body. You haven't much time to decide, Joe. <laughs> well, don't rush me. I've got to do some figuring. Make up your mind, Joe. Well, now look. What if I did it only temporary? Supposing I was Farnsworth just for a little while until after I helped that kid out. Could I do that? If you wish it. All right. And after you got me out of Farnsworth's body, you'd have to get me a body that would suit me. Is that clear? Quite. Okay, it's a deal. Well, come on, Mr. Jordan. We've got to hurry. <laughs> Mr. Jordan, I'm all wet. <laughs> I'm soaking wet. Well, you just got out of the bath, Joe. That's where Farnsworth was. Yeah. Well, uh, where's Farnsworth now? You're Farnsworth. What? Oh, no. No, wait, wait. We can't get away with this. Mr. Jordan, I still feel like me. I still sound like me. Inwardly, you haven't changed, Joe. Outwardly, you're Bruce Farnsworth, and that's what they'll see and hear. Mr. Farnsworth, are you in there? Answer him, Joe. Uh, answer him? What, you mean people can hear me now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, but he knows that other guy's voice. That is exactly what you'll hear. To everyone else, you'll seem to be talking like Bruce Farnsworth. Mr. Farnsworth, is anything wrong? Please answer me, sir. Go ahead, Joe. Oh, okay. I'll be out in a minute. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. There. <laughs> Now, what he heard was the voice of Farnsworth. Oh, it was, huh? And when you open that door, what he sees will be Farnsworth. You try it. Okay, here goes. <clears throat> Excuse me, Mr. Farnsworth, but there's a Miss Logan... What'd you call me? Why, uh, Mr. Farnsworth. Mr... <clears throat> hey, go on. There's a Miss... <laughs> a Miss Logan here to see you, sir. Yeah, I know. I beg your pardon, sir? I mean, uh, I'll go right down. Yeah. <laughs> he never batted an eye, Mr. Jordan. I beg your pardon, sir. Remember, Joe, people can hear you now. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Forgot uh, what, sir? Nothing, I was only thinking. Well, look, Mr. Jordan, you mean they, they still can't see or hear you? No, Joe. Who can't see and hear whom, sir? <laughs> Nobody beat it, will you? I'll be right down. Very good, sir. Isn't that amazing? Mr. Farnsworth, he calls me, looking right at me. <laughs> How do you do it, Mr. Jordan? Well, if there were no mystery left to explore, Joe, life would get rather dull, wouldn't it? Now to the library, and I think you're going to be something of a surprise down there. My husband's taking rather long, isn't he? Yes, very long. Well, perhaps he won't come down at all. Julia? So why don't you go, Miss Logan? There's no help for you. Your father's in jail to stay. Hello. Somebody want me? Mr. Farnsworth. Bruce. Bruce. 
Bruce, what are you... Hello, Miss Logan. I'm glad to see you. Mr. Farnsworth, I'd like to speak to you privately. Yeah, sure. Why not? How about outside? Bruce, you... You... What's the matter? Nothing. I... I just... Oh, hey, Abbott. Mrs. Farnsworth looks a little pale around the gills. She looks like she's gonna... Oh, Oh, she did. (laughs) I'll pick her up. This way, Miss Logan. (laughs) Oh, sit down, Miss Logan. What's on your mind? Mr. Farnsworth, I just want one thing. I want you to get my father out of jail. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's in jail, isn't he? As if you didn't know, you put him there. Well, Farnsworth did. I mean, you see, I'm not really... Well, you know how it goes. Now, now, for instance, if you want to change overcoats... This is hardly the time for jokes. Oh, oh, I'm not joking, Miss Logan. Then admit it. You did put my father in jail. Well, all right, I did. But I didn't have anything to do with it. You're just trying to put me off. You're trying to make a fool out of me. You, you think you can love me all of it as if I were a child. Oh, look, your father's going to be all right, Miss Logan. Another Farnsworth uh, trick. They told me there was no use coming here to talk to you. Oh, no, please, listen. I, I knew you were cruel. But to play with people like this and torture them. Oh, oh you're horrible. Horrible. Oh, wait, Miss Logan. I'll get your father out. I'll... Listen. She's a high-spirited girl, Joe. Yeah. Did you hear that, Mr. Jordan? I was sitting right there. Yeah. Well, I certainly fixed it, didn't I? (laughs) She likes me a lot. She will in time. Oh, go on. I'm poison to her. Mr. Jordan, this won't work. You better get me out of this, this, this overcoat and let's get moving. She is wonderful, though, isn't she? Oh, yeah. Boy, I'd give my right arm if I could help her. You promised you would, didn't you? You can't very well move on until you've made good. Yeah, but it's no use. I don't even know what to do. Bruce Farnsworth can do anything he wishes. Well, I'll have to be leaving you now, Joe. Hmm? What? My work's piling up. I'll have to get back. Yeah, but but you can't leave me holding the bag in a mess like this. I'll be back whenever you need me. So long, Joe. Yeah, but Mr. Jordan! Oh, Mr. Jordan, don't go walking through walls on me. Hey, oh, where are you? Mr. Jordan! Mr. Jordan! <laughs> Holy cow! <laughs> Just a moment, Mr. DeMille and our stars Terry Grant, Claude Rains, Evelyn Keyes, and James Gleason will return in Act Two of Here Comes Mr. Jordan. Well, here's Libby Collins, our Hollywood reporter. Welcome, Libby. What's new? I've had the most exciting afternoon, Mr. Ruick. Lieutenant, Lieutenant Lupino and I... Lieutenant Lupino? Now, wait a minute, Libby. Are you referring to Ida Lupino? Of course, Mr. Ruick. Ida's a lieutenant in the Women's Ambulance Defense Corps. She enlisted as a private in the Corps, learned how to be a fine mechanic, and now she's a lieutenant. You should see her in her snappy uniform. She looks lovelier than ever. I believe it, Libby. The same exquisite complexion, of course. Ida's a real Lux girl. You bet she is. She says her daily complexion care is an active lather facial with Lux soap. She's glad these busy days it's such a quick, easy care. A care that really works. You know, Libby, I think the ladies in our audience would like to know just how Ida Lupino takes her daily Lux Beauty facial. Won't you tell them? Gladly, Mr. Ruick. Here's what Ida says. Pat the creamy Lux soap lather lightly in, rinse with warm water, then with a dash of cool. Pat gently with a towel to dry. Ida says her skin feels smoother after this daily care, that it's a wonderful beauty aid. Many other famous Hollywood stars say that too, Libby. They depend on their Lux soap complexion care these extra busy days. They do, Mr. Ruick, because they've found these beauty facials such an easy, quick way to help keep skin smooth. I'm sure every woman who tries this famous Hollywood care will agree with you, Libby. Why not begin tomorrow and try these facials for 30 days? See how thoroughly Lux Soap's gentle, active lather removes stale cosmetics and every trace of dust and dirt. See how flower-fresh your skin looks after this Lux Soap beauty care. Then you'll know why nine out of ten lovely screen stars... Use this luxurious white soap regularly. Get some Lux Toilet Soap tomorrow. Buy it the economical three cakes at a time way. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Act two of Here Comes Mr. Jordan, starring Cary Grant as Joe, Claude Rains as Mr. Jordan, Evelyn Keyes as Betty, and James Gleason as Max. The spirit of Joe Pendleton is encased in the body of Bruce Farnsworth, and 
Joe is finding the situation very annoying. He's discovered that Bruce Farnsworth is, or was, a first-class crook and all-around cad. Only the presence of his beloved saxophone makes Joe's existence bearable. Mr. Farnsworth, you sent for me? Yeah. What are you looking at, Abbott? Well, I didn't know you played a saxophone. No? Well, a lot of people don't know it. You'll get used to it after a while. Now, let's get on to business. I've been thinking over this Logan affair, and it don't sound so good. I want to get Mr. Logan out of jail. With fraud pinned on him like this? Well, who pinned it on him? Well, naturally, we did. That's what I thought, so let's unpin it. Mr. Farnsworth, you realize you'll have to buy back every share of that worthless stock? It's impossible. Hmm? Well, who's got it? Naturally, small investors all over the country. Oh, small investors, eh? <laughs> it's nice work. I'll give them back every cent they paid for it. That will take millions of dollars. Have I got it? Of course, but... You... All right, let's do it. Don't you feel you ought to think this over first? I have thought it over. And get this. You and I are going to tangle plenty from now on if you don't watch your step. So don't try any funny business. And stay out of my bathroom. <laughs> paper, paper, Farnsworth, please, Logan, insecurities fraud. Paper, Logan, released from jail. Millions paid back to investors. Paper, paper. <laughs> Mr. Jordan! Mr. Jordan! Here I am, Joe. Oh, oh, hello, Mr. Jordan. You're just the man I needed. I told you I'd come if you needed me. How are you, Mr. Pendleton? Oh, you too, huh? What do you want? I didn't ask for you. Oh, really, Mr. Pendleton? It's all right, Joe. He came with me. What's the trouble? Well, look at this in the paper. That's what's the trouble. You mean about giving the money back to the oh, no, investors? Oh, no, 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 not that. On the sporting page. Listen. Murder out in a fight champ. Mr. Jordan, they can't do this to me. They're trying to ditch me out of the title. This is what comes of fooling around with this temporary Farnsworth business. Now, look at the spot I'm in. You're in no spot whatsoever, Mr. Pendleton. Why don't you keep out of this? I knew perfectly well that you were to have another body. Yeah, well, what have you done about it? Just scoured the world for it, that's all. And I may say, I found it. Hmm. What have you found? A superb specimen. A strapping fellow in Australia who'll soon be available. A motor accident. Huh? What's his weight? 192 pounds. Oh, that's good. What's his reach? Uh, 78 inches. Not bad. Waist, chest, and forearm. Oh, great heavens, what difference does that make? He's got a waist and a chest and a forearm. What more do you want? Well, I want to know. That's what I want. Why, well, you're fumbling around the championships getting away from then me. Then it won't get very far. We have found out that you are actually intended to be the next world's champion. What? Is that a fact? Yes, Joe. Well, how do you know? Nothing can prevent it. I knew it. I told you. Well, come on. What are we waiting for? Let's take a look at this Australian fella. Mr. Farnsworth, sir. Uh, oh, it's the butler. Hey, duck, you guys. Beat it. We don't have to duck, Joe. They can't see us. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Why can't I remember that? Mr. Farnsworth. Yeah, what? Miss Logan is here, sir. Oh, Miss Logan? Well, bring her in. Uh, never mind, I'll get her myself. Yes, sir. Oh, is this delay necessary, Mr. Jordan? Yes, and very interesting. Hello, Miss Logan. Come right in here. Sit down. Um, can I get you something? Uh, um, coffee or something? <laughs> no, I just wanted to tell you my father's home. Thank you. Oh, that's fine. Fine. Sit down. It was a wonderful thing you did. Not only for my father, I mean to give that money back to all those people. Oh, well, as a matter of fact, that's about the only thing to do, wasn't it? I don't know. I... I'm sorry I keep on staring at you like this. Oh, that's okay. I'm doing a little staring myself. I'm all mixed up. When I came to see you that night... When I was trying to hate you most, I couldn't deny there was something warm and friendly, even gentle in the way you smiled. Well, it was, huh? <laughs> Gee, well, well, that, 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 that's wonderful. How long does this dribble go on? A little patience. You know what I told my father this was? A miracle. A miracle? Why? Well, that a man like Bruce Farnsworth could have a real feeling for the happiness of others. Well, now, that's as good a way to go through life as any other, isn't it? That, yes, that's all I meant. Except when you find that in somebody, it's a great discovery. <laughs> I guess that's why I keep staring. I, I can't help it. it. It's something in your eyes and, and what's behind them that, that I keep trying to see. <laughs> that sounds silly, doesn't it? No. No, I know what you mean. When you make a discovery like that, it's pretty important, isn't it? I mean, it's more important than what two people look like, or who they are, or anything else. Of course. Yeah. And even if he was... Well, it wouldn't make any difference what he was. The other thing is all that matters. That's how it ought to be. 
I'll have to go now. Goodbye. Uh, will I see you again? Yes, of course. Goodbye. <sighs> Goodbye. Gee, <laughs> well, thank goodness she's gone. Oh, Mr. Jordan, did you hear what she said? She was looking at me, Joe. She likes me, me. Oh, really, sir, we have to get moving. Yes, ready, Joe? Huh? Oh, what do you mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, that Australian guy. If you recall, yes. Well, oh, wait a minute, I can't do that now. Why not? Well, don't you see, Mr. Jordan, she likes me the way I am. Now, if I go running off to Australia and pull a switch just when I get her used to this Farnsworth, I might lose her. Yes, Joe. Yeah. Well, now, look, Mr. Jordan, <clears throat> this Farnsworth was about my age. He had a pretty good body once. You said he played polo. Well, why couldn't I build him up physically like I did me? Why not? Yeah, exercise, plain food, plenty of fresh air. I'm sure you'd do wonders with it. Certainly, him. but what I know about fighting, of course I could. I could get that body in the pink in no time at all and Nick Murdoch with it. Then I've got the title and I got her, too. Mr. Pendleton, is this final? You'll bet it's final. I'm getting Max Corgill in here tomorrow to help me train. But I'm going to stay like I am, as Farnsworth. <laughs> Farnsworth. Don't bother Mr. me while I'm punching the bag. I told you that before. But Mr. Farnsworth, Mr. Corkle is here. Oh, Corkle, He's Max a... Corkle? Yes, sir. Oh, well, where is he? Hey, Corkle, come on in. Excuse me, but... Uh... Hello, Corkle. Right in here. Uh, right here. Uh, thanks. I got a telegram Yeah, wait a minute, you. wait a minute. Hey, you. Sit. Outside. Very good, sir. <laughs> Max, you old son of a gun. I'm glad to see you. Do you know me? I certainly I know you, you dumb ox. Take a good look, Max. Do you know me? Sure, everybody knows you, Mr. Farnsworth. Oh, what's the matter with your eyes, you big sap? I'm not Farnsworth. I'm Joe Pendleton. You're Joe. You're nuts, Mr. Farnsworth. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Wait a minute, Max. Wait. Wait. Now look, Max. I know I don't look like Joe, but I'm him just the same, and it's your fault. My fault? Yeah. Yeah, if you hadn't been in such a hurry to cremate me, I wouldn't be in the jam I'm in now. I... I... I cr cr cremated you? Uh, didn't you? Take, take it easy, will you, Mr. Farnsworth? It's been kind of hot today, ain't it? I better go now. Oh, no, 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 you don't, Max. Now, listen. You remember the time I went up in the plane? Well, something went fluey, and one of those guys that goes around collecting people, he pulled a boner. He grabbed me off before me time, and while I'm arguing with him, whether I'm dead or not, you cremate me. <laughs> then they gotta make good. They gotta get me another body. You get it? Sure, sure. Uh, then evidence fine, ain't it? And all you need now is a doctor. The best one. Maybe a specialist. Now, 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 listen to me. I'm a very busy man, Mr. Farnsworth. The body they give me belongs to this other guy. They drowned him in the bathtub, pushed him underneath the water. Hey! Hey, quiet! Huh? <laughs> now, keep quiet, Max. Having trouble, Joe? Yeah. Oh, Mr. Jordan? Gee, I certainly am glad you showed up. Max, this is Mr. Jordan. Is there somebody here with us? <laughs> yeah. yeah, Mr. Jordan. Oh, uh, uh, pleased to meet you, Mr. Jordan. Where is he? <laughs> oh, but I forgot. You can't see him and you can't hear him. Oh, well, maybe if I had a good stiff drink... I'd... Well, you can't see him because you're not dead yet. Oh. Oh, well, uh, well, I guess you two fellas have got a lot of business to talk over, so I'll be mooching the law. Oh, now, come here, Max. Come here and sit down. Oh, uh... Mr. Jordan, I've got to get this through to him. Make him understand, will you? You can do it yourself, Joe. Try. Oh, I can't, huh? Oh, well. Uh, all right. L now, listen, Max. Now, how would I know about Joe if I wasn't Joe? And listen to this. You got 40% of me. Yeah? Since when did you give me that? Well, since that time in Astoria when you saw me put away Butcher Boy McKenzie. Don't you remember you said I had color? You said I was what they wanted? Uh, look, look. How's your sister Rosie and her three kids? And have the twins gotten over the measles yet? Hey... Who are you, anyways? I'm Joe. You're Joe. This is Farnsworth's body because you burned mine, you big stiff. Hey, wait a minute. Wait. Sit there. Hey, now, look. I'll prove it to you. Now, no. you remember this? My saxophone? Hey, that's Joe's. I give it to him. Where'd you get it? It's my sax, I tell you. Wait. I'll play your favorite tune for you. Now, listen. You always hit that note, son. You, Joe. It's it's you. It's Joe. Uh... Oh, now Max, Max, don't faint. No, come on, Max. No, no, Max, no. Come on, sit down, Joe. Joe, Joe, Max, Max, snap out of it. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, look at me, fella. Easy, oh, Joe, easy, Joe, easy. Joe, Joe, Joe. Yeah. 
Take a deep breath, Max. Come on, come on, fella. Yeah, breathe, Max, breathe. There we are. That's a boy. There. How you feel better, Max? Huh? Yeah. You sure just in a hangover from last night. You really are, Joe? Listen, Max. Inside, I'm Joe. Outside, I'm Farnsworth. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Is your pal still around? Yeah, he's right there. He is, huh? Maybe I'm somebody else, too. Ask him. No, don't. <laughs> if I'm somebody else's body, I don't want to know about it. Max, I want to tell you why I sent for you. They're talking about matching K.O. Murdoch with Gilbert. Yeah? Well, who did Murdoch have to fight before he got a crack at Gilbert's title? Joe, I mean you. All right. I want you to fix it for me to fight Murdoch. You're crazy. K.O. never fight Farnsworth. Tell him what the registrar discovered, Joe. Yeah, that's right. Is he talking again? Yeah. <laughs> Max, I'm going to let you in on something. I'm the next champ. It's in the book. Nothing can change it. Is that what he said? That's what he said, and he knows. Will he insure any bets? <laughs> Max, I'm telling you what you got to do. Yeah, but Fawn's with the banking. Look, you go and see Lefty K.O.'s manager. Offer him some money, any amount. Well, like what? Oh, what'll it take? I don't know, 25 grand at least. Okay, I'll send you a check this afternoon. But go down there and sew up that Murdoch fight. Okay. Hey, Joe, is your friend still here? Sure. Oh. Well, I'm pleased to have met you, Mr. Jordan. Uh, could I drop you some ways? Uh, no, no, come to think of it, I ain't going your way, am I? Well, so <laughs> I wish you didn't have to go yet. I'd like to just sit and talk a while. I'm afraid I can't. I told my father I'd be home. It, it's getting very late. Yeah, I guess it is. Well, I'll have Ab Abbott take care of those papers in the morning, so don't you worry about it. Thank you. Well, the car's waiting outside. Yeah? You know, I could stand here and look at you all night. I mean, well, I never saw you done up like this before. You look wonderful. <laughs> Say, look at me. Did you see anything? Any, any difference? Now, let's see. Healthier, maybe? You look very well. Sort of in the pink? <laughs> yes, almost pink. Yeah, they are. I've been exercising. Really? Yeah, and I mean exercising. Sparring around, punching the bag, plenty of road work, lots of sleep. You might even call it training. Why on earth would you be training? Oh, that's the point. Look, uh, did you ever box? Oh. Oh, no. oh, no, of course you didn't. Well, I used to. I liked it a lot, too. I thought I'd like to get back in shape again. What for? Well, like I, uh... Well, I thought I might like to do some fighting. Some real fighting, right in the ring. Oh, you're joking. Well, I'm not bad, you know. Bruce, you must stop this exercising. It's going to your head. Yeah, but listen, I... Good night, Bruce. No, no, I'm serious about this. You see, I... I... Oh. oh. Can I see you, Mr. Pendleton? It's very important. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. What's the matter, Bruce? What are you staring at? Huh? Oh, uh... Well, excuse me a minute, will you? I'll be right back. Now, what do you want? I thought I saw the last of you. Oh, I've got some very distressing news, Mr. Pendleton. You can't use Farnsworth's body anymore. What do you mean? Just what I said. You're crazy. Mr. Jordan told me I was going to be champ. But not with Farnsworth's body. Why not? It wasn't meant to be that way. Why not? Don't keep saying why not. Mr. Pendleton, you haven't much more time to stay in Farnsworth. Oh, go on. I'm not even listening. Mr. Jordan said it was okay and this is the way it's going to be. I'm afraid not, Mr. Pendleton. Now, you wait. Come back here. Listen. I... Bruce. Huh? Oh, Bruce, yeah. I really must leave. Well, I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. I'll take you to your car. Come on, Betty. Bruce, has something happened? No, no. Bruce, what's troubling you? Oh, nothing. I... I... Look, you just got to believe one thing. We got a great life ahead, you and me. Nobody can take that away from us. Why are you looking at me like that? Well, I... I'm trying to memorize your face. I'm trying to memorize everything about you. So that no matter what happens, I won't forget you. What might happen? Now, don't be scared. Just look at me. You wouldn't forget me either, would you? No, never. Ah, of course you wouldn't. But, but if something did happen, I mean the thing you said you saw in me, something in my eyes. Well, if someday somebody came up to you, he might even be a fighter and acted like he'd seen you someplace before, You'd notice the same thing in him. Even if you thought you did, you'd give him a break. Because he might be a good guy. I don't understand you. Oh, well, I'm just crazy. Don't mind me. I, 
Well, I never want to lose you, that's all. And I'm never going to. Betty, can I kiss you? Oh, yes, Bruce. I thought you'd be here, Mr. Jordan. Look, it isn't true, is it, about giving up Farnsworth? You're not going to ask me to do that now, are you? It's not up to me, my boy. Yeah, but why? We got everything going great. You told me I was going to be champ. You will be, but on another road. Yeah, but why not his Farnsworth? I got his body in the pink. Why not his Farnsworth? Because it wasn't meant to be that way. Oh, that's no answer. On the contrary, it's the perfect answer. Yeah, but look, Mr. Jordan. There's Betty. I love her. And she loves me as Farnsworth. You can't ask me to give her up and forget her now. No, if that was meant to be, it will be. Now don't talk like that. I can't switch now. Listen, Mr. Jordan. Just let me get through this fight and work it out somehow with Betty. Give me a little time. There's only a little time left, Joe. All right. Then I say no. You're not going to play tricks with my life again. I'm going to stay like I am. You can't change the course yeah. of your destiny. Well, we'll see about that. If you think you can get me loose from Farnsworth, you go ahead and try it. I can't stop it, Joe. Farnsworth is going to die. What? You're crazy. He's going to be killed, Joe. Oh, uh, what are you talking about? He's going to be killed by Abbott. There's no mistake this time. Oh. Mr. Jordan. Mr. Jordan. Don't fight, Joe. Leave Farnsworth. Oh. This is it, huh? And, and Farnsworth. What's going to happen to him now? Just earthly remains for them to dispose of. Yeah. Yeah, but me, Mr. Jordan. Me. Joe Pendleton. Why, you and I will be moving again, Joe, and searching. Ah, oh, Mr. Jordan. Why couldn't you give me just a little time? Don't you see? I'll lose her now. Betty. Betty. Don't fight, Joe. Leave Farnsworth. Joe. Leave Farnsworth. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille presents Perry Grant, Claude Rains, Evelyn Keyes, and James Gleason in Act Three of Here Comes Mr. Jordan. Over at the Martins the other evening, young Nancy had just come home from her Red Cross class. Nancy, Bill just called. He said he'd come for you about nine for that dance at the club. At nine, Mother? Oh, goodness. Well, I'll hurry. But I'm going to take time for my bath before I dress just the same. Of course, dear. I'll draw some warm water. And there's a nice fresh cake of Lux soap in the bath. Oh, Mommy, you're wonderful. Mmm, this feels good. Golly, don't know what I'd do without my Lux soap beauty bath. I'm feeling better by the moment. There. Now I'm sure of being perfectly fresh. Gosh, I love the nice perfume Lux Toilet Soap leaves on my skin. Now to get dressed in a hurry. Hello, Bill. Why, thanks a million. I feel good, too. Gee, Nancy, I love to be near you. Your skin is so sweet. It looks as if Nancy's evening was going to be a great success. Well, she's one of those clever girls who follows the screen star's tip never neglects her daily beauty bath with fragrant white Lux toilet soap. Here's what Claudette Colbert says. It makes a girl so attractive to have skin that's sweet. A daily Lux soap beauty bath makes daintiness sure. Why don't you take Hollywood's tip? Enjoy the luxury of a daily Lux toilet soap beauty bath. A luxury any woman can afford. For this fine soap with active lather costs so little. Buy three cakes of Lux toilet soap tomorrow. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille... Curtain rises on the third act of Here Comes Mr. Jordan. Joe Pendleton's spirit is roaming the world again, this time without a body. For Farnsworth has been killed and his remains hidden. It's the night of the Murdoch fight. Joe and Mr. Jordan walk slowly along the street in front of the arena. Quite a crowd in there, Joe. Would you like to see part of the fight? Ah, no. What for? That ought to be me fighting in there, not Murdoch. Just as you like. We can hear it on the radio at the cigar store down there. Read all about it. Farnsworth disappearance still unsolved. Police question principle. 
Hey, you hear that, Mr. Jordan? They haven't found Farnsworth yet. Where is he now? In the basement refrigerator. Tony Abbott and Julia got rid of him. Oh, the refrigerator. Hmm, nice guy, that Abbott. Yeah, it's the fight, Joe. Want to listen to it? Hmm? Oh, okay, sure. Murdoch throws a right to Gilbert's body and a left to the head and another right to the body. Murdoch is crowding Gilbert into the ropes. Oh, there's a left to the chin, another right, another left, and now they go into a clinch. That Murdoch's a great fighter, Joe, and you know it. In your heart, you'd even like to be like him. Oh, me? Now they're out of it. Another right to the head. Gilbert's wings wild and Murdoch... Murdoch staggered. All of a sudden, Murdoch's quit. I don't get it. Gilbert didn't even touch him. Huh? That wild punch only grazed the side of Murdoch's head and he's staggering. Oh, well, Murdoch I don't believe it. Murdoch was going like a bus saw. Why should he quit? He was shot, Joe. What shot? By gamblers from the ringside because he wouldn't throw the fight. But they shot him? Murdoch? One of the cleanest guys in the game? Gilbert's swollen all over Murdoch now. Cutting him to ribbons. He's down. Murdoch's down. He finally dropped. Fell in a heap. He's dead, Joe. Dead? He's down, flat on his face. The referee is trying to get Gilbert to a neutral oh, corner. Boy, I wish I could finish that fight. You were in hand, Joe. But you mean I could take Murdoch's place? We've just got time to make it. Come on, Joe. Seven, eight, nine. He's up at the counter nine. Murdoch is up. Oh, what a fight. One minute lying there like a dead man and now on his feet like a dynamo. It's amazing. Now he lets go with a terrific right and a left and another right. Now Gilbert's down. The referee's counting. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Gilbert's out and Murdoch is a new champion. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight will go down in history as one of the most sensational encounters of all time. It's, hey, wait a minute. What's that thing Murdoch's taking off the ring post in his corner? A saxophone. I didn't notice that there before. A saxophone. Uh, come on now, everybody outside. Outside now, the champ's got to rest. Let me see him. I got to see Murdoch. What do you want here, Cockle? Beat it. No, you don't. Let Cockle in here, Lefty. What's Cockle got to do with you? Plenty, and you get out of here, Lefty. You and the rest of them. Now, get out. How do you get that way? I'm your manager. Yeah, and a fine crooked manager you turned out to be. Now, get out of here before I throw you. Now, Beat you it. you must be nuts. Hello, Max. Listen, there's just one thing I want to know, Murdoch. I was listening to this fight, and the guy said you had a saxophone. Where is it? Mm, right here. That's it. Where'd you get it? That's Joe Pendleton's sax. He always had it in the ring with him. <laughs> Max, don't you know me? <laughs> oh, are you, are you, are you? Sure, Joe Pendleton. Oh, George, George. Oh, no, Max, don't faint, don't faint. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm all right. What are you doing in Murdoch's body? Oh, I just took Murdoch's body to help him out. He was shot. Look, a hole in his chest. Oh, Joe, what kind of body is this to pick up? I better get a doctor. No, no, it's nothing. Nothing you see with no. a bullet in you? Hey, Joe, what about Farnsworth? Where is he? Oh, he's dead, Max. Tony Abbott shot him. Tell the cops to look in the basement icebox. Oh, boy, they'll hang that Abbott high in a kite. Hello, Joe. Oh, hello, Mr. Jordan. Hey, Joe, is he here again? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Max. But would you mind waiting outside a minute? Go sure. call the cops, Max, and then get in touch with Betty Logan. Sure, sure, I want to sure. see her. Well, I'm pleased to have met you again, Mr. Jordan. Ah, uh, Mr. Jordan, I'm glad you came here. How did you like the fight? That was a nice job, Joe. You made Murdoch very happy. He was told how it came out. He was? Oh, that's swell. You fought beautifully, Joe. Cleanly, scientifically. This is your niche, Joe. This is where you belong. Where you were meant to be. World champion. Ah, uh, no. Not me. Murdoch is. I don't mind helping him out, Mr. Jordan, but now get me out of this. Joe. Yeah? Remember I said you wouldn't be cheated? Yeah. Nobody is, really. You were meant to be champion. You are. This is your destiny, Joe. You're going to go on being Murdoch. What? Yeah, but... But wait a minute. You're forgetting about Betty. What good is anything if I haven't got her? That's a chance you have to face, Joe, but don't worry. You'll have everything that was ordained for you. Oh, I don't like it, Mr. Jordan. This I... is your road, Joe. From now on, you're K.O. Murdoch. There'll be no more memory of Joseph Pendleton. And everything's going to be all right. Goodbye, Joe. Wait, listen. Goodbye, uh, Joe. Hey, Joe, I called the cops. Huh? What do you want in here, Coco? Listen, will you? They found Farnsworth Bunny, just like you said. I don't get it. I don't know any Farnsworth. Ah, oh, now, don't give me no answers like that, Joe. Well, have you got a fever, Joe? Oh, sure, you got a fever from being shot. Who was shot? You was. Look at your chest, you got a hole in... Hey, where 
is it? Where is what? The bullet hole. <laughs> you showed it to me. You're going crazy. Get out of here. I'm going around again. It's that guy, Jordan. What did he do to you, Joe? Why do you keep calling me Joe? Oh, look at me. Take a good look at me. Don't you know me? Yeah, I think so. Well, who am I? Well, don't you know? <laughs> well, I got me doubts. You tell me. You're Corkle, Max Corkle. Who are you? K.O. Murdoch. What's the matter with you? Do you... Do you know Joe Pendleton? Yeah, sure. I knew Joe. He's killed in an airplane crash. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's a tough break. Nice fella. Strictly on the level, too. Yeah, he certainly was. Yeah. I understand you are, too. Hey, how'd you like to manage me, Corkle? Manage you? Sure. Oh, yeah. Swell. Well, I gotta be running along. Yeah, sure. Hey, what's the matter with you? Come on, snap out of it. We're gonna do all right, Max. Yeah, sure. Any guys outside? No, they've all went. Good. Uh, so long, Maxie. So long. So long, Joe. Oh. oh. Sorry, miss. Uh, uh, you looking for somebody? Uh, yes, Mr. Corkle. They, they said he might be in Mr. Murdoch's dressing room. Say. Don't I know you? I, I don't think so. Uh, no, no. No, I guess not. I thought for a minute I did. Funny how sometimes you feel you know people. Yes. Oh, your eyes hurt. Oh, it's nothing. Just a little swollen. It's all red. Oh, it doesn't hurt. I'm Murdoch. Oh. Ralph Murdoch, and you're... Uh... Uh, Betty Logan. Hello. How do you do? Yeah, glad to know you. Uh, you interested in the fight game? I knew a man who was... Do I know him? Bruce Farnsworth. He... He was killed. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Was he a friend of yours? I loved him. Oh. Oh, that's tough. Yes, but I don't know. Maybe it was the kindest thing. He... He was so troubled. I... I don't seem to feel... Wait. What did you do that for? You touched my face. Your bandage was loose. I... I didn't mean to. Well, it felt kind of good. You know, you were looking at me just now, kind of looking right through my eyes. What's that? Oh, don't be scared. They just turned the lights out for a second. Just a warning. Everybody out. Oh. You know, in the darkness, your voice sounded like I'd heard it someplace before. I couldn't remember where. You didn't feel that, did you? Well, yes. I, I felt I was standing high up, looking out over the sea. And someone was swimming toward me, shouting something. Something I... I felt I'd heard long ago. Yeah. I said, don't be scared. Oh, did you? Yeah. People are always thinking they knew someone before, in another existence. You know, I've had a feeling all night I was in a hurry to meet somebody I knew. Hey, uh... There's a little place around the corner. It's a swell little place called Mike's where I go after the fight. You wouldn't want to... No, I... I guess you wouldn't want to tonight. Feeling the way you do about him. I guess not, huh? What was it he said? If I were to meet a fighter, I was to... I'd love to go with you, Mr. Murdoch. Okay. Swell. So long, champ. A Knockout Blow to the Blues by Cary Grant, Claude Rains, Evelyn Keyes, and James Gleason. Say a word to the folks in the radio audience, champ. Well, I'm sorry. I'll have to consult my manager. The champ wishes to state that it was a great fight. Oh, he'll have to say more than that. Think of the traditions of the ring. Can I get a word into Mom? Okay. The champ wishes for it to state... Hello, Mom. He'll be right home. Yeah. Well, before you go, I'd like to tell the women in our audience something about Lux Soap. Ah, 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 ah. 
don't think you can mention that here. How about it, CB? Mm, I don't know, Evelyn. You see, we well, don't... Well, I'm like... sorry. I, I just can't keep quiet about luck so... Ah, 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 ah. You're liable to get CB in trouble. Well, he should be. He doesn't want every woman to know what a grand complexion care luck soap is. I used it even before I came to Hollywood. Mm. That complexion is why I brought you to Hollywood, Evelyn. You've got a lot to thank luck soap for. What's the story in the next week, CB? Comedy or drama? Both comedy and drama, Claude. Because our play is the new Paramount motion picture, Skylark. And our stars, well, uh, some of our brightest stars. The same ones you saw in the picture. Claudette Colbert, Ray Milland, and Brian Ahern. <laughs> Skylark is the story of a girl who almost loses her husband. But when the girl is Claudette Colbert, well, I'll let you guess the answer. Oh, uh, that sounds swell, CB. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Get ready for the turn back. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Claudette Colbert, Ray Land, and Brian Ahern in Skylark. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Every dime and dollar you can give to your local fight infantile paralysis campaign will be a vote of confidence for President Roosevelt on his 60th birthday. So fight with him to stamp out this disease. You can help, too, in the great war emergency drive of the Red Cross. Give all you can to the organization America always turns to in time of need. Cary Grant is co-starring with Gene Arthur and Ronald Coleman in a new George Stevens production at Columbia. Claude Rains will soon be seen in the 20th Century Fox picture, Moontide. Evelyn Keyes was heard tonight through the courtesy of Columbia Pictures and will soon be seen in Adventures of Martin Eden. James Gleason appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox and is now seen in My Gal Cell. Heard in tonight's play were Howard McNear as The Messenger, Bernard Zanville as Tony, Tori Carlton as Julia, Thomas Mills as Sisk, and Charles Seal, Warren Ash, Edward Marr, and Eugene Forsythe. Tune in next Monday night to hear Claudette Colbert and Ray Milland with Brian Hearn in Skylark. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Ruick. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.